Hello, Black Talk fans. Today, we will be talking about phlebotomist. Phlebotomist is one of the most important steps as it is a link between patients and laboratory. Phlebotomist is not something to be taken lightly because most of the time, the patient course of treatment depends on laboratory testing results. The quality of the test result is also based on the quality of the blood draw. This is why the laboratory established specimen rejection criteria to maintain accurate testing results. Today video, I will include specimen rejection criteria and the reason behind each of them. Without further ado, let's click that like button, share, subscribe, and don't forget to click that notification bell. There are three phases of laboratory testing, pre-analytical, analytical, and post-analytical. Pre-analytical include tasks are performed before testing begins, like patient identification, blood collection process, and patient care during the collection process. Probotomist is a pre-analytical process and this is our focus today. Since the quality of the test results are based on the quality of blood draw, there are criteria that the specimen has to meet. If the specimen is failed to meet the specimen standard of collection, the specimen is subject for rejection. Common reasons for specimen rejections are mislabel, QNS or quantity not sufficient, underfill, anticoagulant specimen that are clotted, wrong tube collected, outdated supply, time specimens draw at wrong time, fluid contamination, lipemia, enteric, and hemolysis. Why laboratorians reject this type of specimen? Let's take a closer look. Mislabel. This includes things like part of the label cuts off, incomplete names and medical record number. The label should be legible and fixed to specimen tube. To prevent this, properly identify the patient with at least two patient identifiers prior to probotomize and label the tube right away in front of the patient. It is a good practice to have the patient look at the label tube to double check and verify that it is their sample before letting the patient go or leave the patient rooms. QNS or quantity not sufficient. This one gets rejected because the laboratory does not have enough specimen to work with. This usually happens when multiple tests are ordered on the same tube but the collector only collect half of the tubes or less. An example would be blood bank sample, usually in a pink top tube. If a patient has an antibody, additional workup will be needed to perform beyond type and screen. This requires a substantial amount of plasma. If a patient requires blood transfusion, plasma is needed for cross-match. Plasma is needed to be cross-matched with each unit of red blood cells for compatibility tests. If you submit a low volume, the specimen may not be enough for cross-matching and will cause a delay in getting blood for patients as a new specimen is required. So to avoid delay in patient care, please fill up the tube. Underfilled some test results are inaccurate when the ratio of the blood to anticoagulant that is in the tube is incorrect. The more problematic tube would be blue top tube, which is the coagulant test. A blue top tube is always get rejected by laboratory personnel if not filled because the test result is altered when the ratio of the blood to anticoagulant is not 9 to 1. Another example would be the heparin tube. When the heparin tubes are underfilled, the results are also not accurate. Heparin is reported to cause folly low sodium, CK and GGT. Another good reason to reject specimen that is underfilled is when underfilled blood culture bottle. When a blood culture is underfilled, you are putting the patient at risk because of not good enough sample. The organism that causes septicemia can be detected as low as one organism per milliliter of blood. But if you did not collect enough blood, you may miss the organism especially at the beginning of infection phase, when the number of bacteria is still low. Therefore, when blood culture specimens are short sample, the bacteria causing complication in the patient may take longer to detect. 
delay antibiotic therapy and leading to complications, including death. The more blood that is collected for blood culture, the better chance of harvesting the causative organisms of bacteremia. The optimum volume for adult patients is 20 cc for both bottles, not to exceed 10 cc per bottle. Anticoagulant specimens that are clotted. Clotted specimens can change the test value such as platelet count, clotting factors, and clot activation time. Wrong tube collection. What count as wrong tube collection? Chemistry samples collected in pink top tubes or coagulant sample collect in gel separator tubes instead of blue top tubes. Why is that a problem? The problem is lay in the anticoagulant that in each type of tube. Pink top tube has EDTA as anticoagulant inside. EDTA is rich in potassium. The level of potassium may be falsely elevated leading to life-threatening medical mistake if used pink top tube specimen for electrolyte testing. In case of the coagulation test collected in serum separator tubes or SST, it is not acceptable because the blood sample is already clotted. If use clotted blood to perform coagulation tests like PT and APTT tests, the result will not be accurate. Outdated supplies Mostly, refer to tube. Make it a good habit to check pabotomist card every day at the beginning of the shift to make sure that you have the supply that are not expired. An expired tube can lose vacuum and lead to underfill which leads to QNS and will be rejected for the reason we talked about earlier. Time specimen draw on the wrong times. This time draw is used to monitor therapeutic drugs. Laboratory monitor a therapeutic agent to adequately evaluate the appropriate dose for patient. The collections and testing of specimens for drop and peak level is necessary. The drop level is the lowest concentrations in patient bloodstream. Therefore, the specimen should be collected just prior administration of the drugs. The peak level is the highest concentrations of a drug in patient bloodstream. For each drug has a different peak time. For instance, when comycin, the drop should be collected just prior to the next dose. The peak should be drawn about one and a half hour after IV infusions has completed. Fluid contaminations. Sometimes tissue fluid can contaminate in blood draw sample, especially in a hard draw. However, most of the fluid contamination is from the IV fluid or other fluid that is being given to the patient at the time of draw. This can happen when the nurse collect from the line and did not discard the first 10 ml. This fluid can give false negative or false positive depending on the type of fluid. I say nurse not pabotomous because only the nurse can collect from the line. I know your nurse trying to save the patient from the pain of getting another stick but the fluid contamination may do more harm to the patients if not collect properly. Lipemia specimen. Lipemia specimen classified as serum or plasma is cloudy due to fat in the specimen. Lipemia can falsely elevate liver function tests. It is also indicated that the patient did not adequately fast for 12 to 18 hours prior having the specimen collected. In a lipemia specimen, we cannot tell the elevated level of glucose and triglyceride due to patient behavior of not fasting or patient pre-existing condition. Due to these reasons, a high level of lipemia specimens will be rejected. Enteric specimen An enteric specimen contains elevated bilirubin level. If the specimen is deeply enteric, it could interfere with cholesterol results. The cholesterol result could be falsely elevated due to enteric. Hemolyzed specimen. Hemolyzed specimen is the number one cause of reject specimen. Hemo means blood. Lysis means rupture or destruction of cells. When combined, hemolyzed means rupture of red blood cells. Red serums of plasma is an indication of hemolyze. The more red the serums of plasma is, the more red blood cell rupture there is. The red color comes from hemoglobin that is in red blood cells which get released into serum or plasma when it ruptures. Now you may ask, 
why hemolyte sample is not a suitable sample for testing, especially for chemistry tests. If the red blood cell burst during specimen collection, the blood being tested is not the same as the blood circulating in the patient, lead to inaccurate test results. But why is that a problem? Because the blood still come from the same person? It should not be that much different, right? No, that is not correct. Inside the red blood cells has a much higher level of potassium than the plasma has. If the hemolyte samples are being tested for potassium, then the level will show that the patient has higher potassium than actually is, and may lead to change course of treatment for the patient. This can put patient health at risk. Beside potassium, sodium and chloride level will also be off. Since sodium and chloride are lower inside the cells, one cell slice, the intercellular fluid mixed with the plasma and decrease expected level of sodium and chloride. In short, potassium is falsely elevated while sodium and chloride will be falsely low. CLS would reject and request a new specimen upon receiving hemolyte sample. Now you may ask, what if the patient condition caused the red blood cell to hemolyze? It is possible, but it is less common. 90% of the time, hemolyte is a technique dependent. When this happens, request a new sample, let the nurse or phlebotomist know that the specimen is hemolyzed. If the collections would draw from a line, then that could be a part of the problem too. This is why when I call to ask for specimen recollections, I would also say that the first sample is hemolyzed and to rule out patient condition, a straight needle sample is required or strongly preferable. That was all for today on specimen rejection criteria. Some of the rejection specimen could be preventable with a little bit more attention during collection process such as mislabel, underfill, wrong tube collections, and time draw. However, sometimes things are not go as planned and it is beyond pabotomous or the nurse control such as lipemia sample. Most of the time, if the specimen does not get rejected for the reason I mentioned above, then it's more likely to be acceptable and processed. If there are other common reasons that you would reject specimen that I haven't mentioned, please share with us in the comment section. Thank you for staying with me until the end. If you have a burning questions, please feel free to leave me a comment down below. Lastly, if you have not done so, please like, share, subscribe, and click that notification bell. I will see you in the next episode of Blood Talk. As always, remember, your blood tells you the story of your health. Thanks for watching. Bye!